Bad Brains at Botany Club on 6th Avenue. Um, it was in the flower district and it was a disused flower shop and I went with Stefan Ielpi from the False Prophets and he said, hey, you want to go see this band, the Bad Brains, they're great. And I was like, yeah, let's go. And it was a huge party in there. That's where I met 90% of the people I'm still friends with today from that scene. I met Nick Martin. I mean, it was, it was like a, a cavalcade. It was a who's who of people that I met that night in that club. So Bad Brains at Botany, you can't, you can't go, you can't get better than that. This was in spring of 81 when I first saw them. You didn't know what hit you. It was like a tsunami of sound and rhythm and energy and, and HR over the top, like, like, like a Valkyrie just cutting through it all. And the energy was bouncing off the walls, hanging from the ceiling. You, you, it spoiled you for life, basically. There was nowhere to go but down from there. I'm supposed to say A7, but I'm gonna say 171 because it was like home. With Jerry up in there and when Dave and Kathy had the rat cage downstairs, Eric and I lived around the corner on East 11th Street. It was our home away from home. We were in there all the time. And so were the brains hanging around, so we'd be kicking a soccer ball and whatnot. Weems came from North Carolina with the, he was with the cigarettes and then he was with the High Sheriffs of Blue, and he was an amazing guitar player and performer on his own. He started producing, he produced the Even Worse album and a bunch of other stuff. He was such a cool down-to-earth guy. He always had time to listen to you, he always had advice, he was never condescending. He is responsible for my guitar playing, so again, apologies. But he drew me, when I said I want to start playing guitar after I quit Even Worse, and I was like, I can't find the words to express myself anymore, I'm going to play guitar. He drew me a circle of fifths, sat me down, showed me how to do some bar chords and things, and he said to me, the first thing you got to do, girls, cut your nails. And I did. This is going to sound really shitty. There weren't that many, just because I came out of this kind of hard rock scene, and it was dudes. You know, who, 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 what, Wendy o. Williams, uh, Chrissy Hind, you know, Debbie Harry, they're all so diverse. Uh, you know, you get little bits and pieces. I'm gonna be honest, my influences were always, always male. It's just what I latched on to. It's, it's, it's an energy, it's something that really, really inspired me. So that, that's kind of where I went. Uh, you know, James Contra was my gateway slam dancer. <laughs> what can I say? He had the moves, he had the form, he had the attitude, he had the face. <laughs> That's it, man. You saw him coming at you, you got out of the way. <laughs> I almost lived in a squat in 1985, a squat on East 9th Street. And uh, I was getting ready to move in with my cat and my half stack, or not half stack, I had a JCM 900 combo at the time. And I think a day or two before I moved in, it burned down. And I remember going through the building with Geneva and his flashlight looking for, you know, dead bodies and whatnot. He was really into that. And that was the end of my squat experience. I realized what could happen and I said, no, I think I'll go get a fucking job. Earl, Mackie, and uh, Johnny Feedback, which always pissed me off because I said to him, I said, you're a drummer. Feedback is for guitar players. And we used to get into a bit of a, yeah, so Johnny Feedback. Uh, Robin Zander, Stevie Wonder. So make sense of that if you can. <laughs> Great Even Worse show memory was the first time we played at Max's and the stage is basically the same level as the audience and people just kind of standing right in, in front of my face singing some of the songs at me and Jack's drum kit moving across the floor the whole time because of the, the way he played because he did a fill every, every four measures anyway so the drum kit's moving and it was falling apart. I think half of it was Harley's anyway 
And at some point, I think he, he had to like nail it to the ground or, or there was some kind of construction work going on by me. I heard this like banging around and he was trying desperately to keep this drum, state, drum kit from moving across the stage. And of course, there was the show place in Jersey when we almost got killed by bikers. And we were waiting in the van with Saccharin Trust and these bikers were outside and we're going, where the fuck is Jack? And this big scary biker goes, I'm gonna kill the next ugly fucking punk rocker that comes out that door. And here comes Jack with his fucking kick drum and we're like, get in the van, man. So yeah, that was a good, good one. I have musical plans for when I finish my PhD. Um, I still have guitars and a bass and um, I bought a little mixing deck and I kind of monkey around with stuff. So once I'm Dr. RB, <laughs> I plan on assaulting the music scene once again.